10. The peer administration introduced sweeping income tax reforms, personal income tax allowances increase from $18,000 to $25,000. People earning up to $25,000 annually will pay no income tax and St. Lucian taxpayers will collectively save up to $14 million every year. Nine. The government of St. Lucia has secured more than EC $36.6 million in funding from the European Investment Bank, EIB. And this loan will, will assist us, not only strengthen our health systems, but also strengthen us in paying some of the commitments that we could during COVID. Eight. Before, the only thing that you could have used as an asset was property. This bill will allow you to be able to use certain assets as, as security. The bill paves the way for entrepreneurs and the self-employed to secure the capital and funding needed to take their businesses to new heights. Seven. The government needs to invest in the police. And this government, within our fiscal reality, is going to invest in the police. The peer administration has initiated the largest infrastructure investment project for the island's police force. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Peer signed a bold agreement with NIPRO to commence construction of a new divisional police headquarters in Groselay, estimated at $35 million. Six. Travel advisors from St. Lucia's top global markets are being welcomed to the destination, along with leading publications, Essence, Katie Curate Media, Weddings and Honeymoons Digital and Magazine, and The Griot. The objective is for the participating travel trade to experience firsthand the full spectrum of the romantic offerings of the island to equip them in strongly recommending St. Lucia for marriage proposals, destination weddings, vow renewal, romantic getaways or honeymoons for which the destination is renowned. St. Lucia Carnival 2023 is slated for the 1st to the 19th July for next year. An early announcement of St. Lucia Carnival so that we could ensure that all the creative, the various artists would have been ahead of the curve in terms of their preparation. Four. Three more schools are beneficiaries of multimedia classrooms, namely Granovia Secondary, Leon Hess Comprehensive and Babano Secondary. The smart classrooms utilize large screen monitors, conferencing technology, and a host of other software advancements aimed at enhancing instruction at the institutions. It is no longer acceptable in any school, irrespective of the level, infant, primary, or secondary, for lessons to be delivered with just chalk and talk or with marker and whiteboard. Three, do not use these barriers to send on anything except food. And this is serious. This is serious, Mr. Speaker. Because several times other items were found in these barriers that are not food, that are not care packages, that are not toys. This idea of caring for the vulnerable has always been led by this Labour Party administration. And we always like to be the one who champion caring and putting our people first. Two. The Ministry of Education extends a heartfelt thank you to everyone who supported our initiative present, proudly representing its school, exalting our nation's teachers. It was immensely heartwarming to see so many St. Lucians from all walks of life put on the uniforms of their alma mater and proudly represented its school whilst exalting our nation's teachers. One. The retrofitting of 13 wellness centers around the island and two government health facilities these facilities are now expected to provide comfort to patrons and staff. While withstanding the forces of nature, the upgraded green facilities are already reporting reductions in daily operational costs.